Hello and welcome to the Frank Williams Show. And I am Frank Williams and my guest for today is Nisi Living Single. She is a Bay Area artist who's just been taking the Bay by the storm with her singing. She is electrifying. I mean, some people say she sounds like Patti LaBelle and, and, and some of the greats out there she sounds like, but she sounds like Nisi, okay? And she is awesome. So what we want to do is let you get a listen to one of her songs real quick. Or in fact, watch one of her videos. Nisi Robinson, man. Nisi living single. So welcome, Nisi. How are you? I'm fine. 
Good. You know, we're glad to have you on my show today. And um, I want the audience to get to know who you are a little bit. Tell them, you know, about who you are and how you end up with this passion, with this great gift that you have to touch people's lives. And, um, yeah, let them get to know you. Uh, my name is Nisi. I'm known as Nisi Living Single for the moment. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I've just been singing all my life. My mom raised me in church, and that's where I first started out. And it's just sprung from there. Yeah. And so tell us about uh, some of the shows you've done. Where have you been singing at? Uh, I can remember when I was nine years old, my first uh, performance was I was Dorothy and the Wiz. Uh, for the child production for the performing arts in Richmond, California, and I was hooked. And um, I can remember just telling my mom, that's what I want to do. I want to sing. And from then on, I was in different productions and different plays as a child, and I did music all through school. And then one of my biggest highlights uh, was in um, an early part of my career working with Jesse James, the blues singer, and I was able to share stage with Lenny Williams and Patti LaBelle and the OJs. So um, that was probably one of the biggest uh, highlights of my time. So you actually got to sing on the same stage with Patti LaBelle and the yes. OJs? we were at the Reno Blues Festival. Wow, mm -hmm. how did that really feel like? <laughs> <laughs> I still like, <laughs> <laughs> Did they compliment your singing? Yes, and Patti LaBelle was very nice. Um, she gave me some good advice. Yeah. She said, get sleep, get rest. Right. And stay focused. Yeah. You know, I found it kind of befitting to show um, the video Gandhi mm -hmm. uh, as your intro. Mm -hmm. uh, probably a lot of people be like, why you didn't play her singing one of the, one of them <laughs> tunes where she... Because it, I think it's most befitting for those who don't know you mm -hmm. Uh, because of your walk, because of your journey, um, you're like the the woman Job who been through a lot of adversities in your life, and um, you're just staying, just focused and moving forward with your life is is really amazing to the point that um, you've you've touched people with your personal life as well, with your strength and endurance. You like this superwoman everybody like look up to. But you're just a human being who's like, you know, have your mind made up on what you want to do with your life. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about your story? Um, well, my story, it probably begins, if you don't mind, I'll show you. Mm -hmm. um, the beautiful lady here, we lost her. We lost her uh, um, um, two years ago. What's her name? Selena Foster. Okay. And she raised my sister and I. And... Um, she is the one that, she was 97 years old. Wow. So she um, taught me a lot of wisdom, a lot of endurance. Um, I probably heard conversations and things I shouldn't have heard as a child um, because my parents were older. She, um, she was very strong. And she, after, she, she took me in, but by 1979 until I moved out when I became an adult, she raised me alone. Mm -hmm. um, just my sister and I as a single mother, and she was up in age. Uh, so um, my journey started when I started having children myself. But not being raised by my mother, I've had plenty of opportunities. Um, but I kind of held back because my biological mother not raising me. I have three beautiful daughters, so I wanted to raise them. So a lot of times I gave up. Uh, not on the dream to sing. I just gave up at the time to say, let me finish being a mother. Mm -hmm. uh, and when I finish that journey, then if it, God is willing, I'll move on. And so I've been blessed to um, be able to say that I have been able to live out my dreams, including in the process. I did have one daughter that got in a little trouble. Um, so I've had custody of her son uh, up until this year, mm -hmm. and she's home now, and she's doing good. Um, I have another daughter with ovarian cancer, uh, but she's doing good. She has two beautiful daughters. Um, all three of my daughters are mothers. Um, and then I have my youngest daughter that probably my biggest adversity between one being away 
um, trying to raise my young, my oldest grandson, who's 12 now, excuse me, 11 now, but he was six at the time, and trying to get one out of college. And so she graduated this year uh, from San Francisco State. And Congratulations. Yeah, so I applaud her, but it was a struggle because she had two children in between that time. So there were times where I took a, still a back seat um, even with my job and employment, I took a job. I had to eventually leave my job to take care of my grandson. So my prayer has always just been to God, wherever you lead me, as long as music takes me there, I'm okay. So you spoke about having children at a young age. So how were you when you had your first I was child? 17, and okay. I was still in high school, yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, at that time, you was living with your foster mom? Yes. Okay, so... Um, um, how are you when you moved in with your foster mom? Actually, no, and she's actually not my foster mom. She's actually um, my grandfather's sister. So oh, okay. I was you so know, raised within my family. No, my I, I mean, I'm worded it that direction, but um, she actually was my grandfather's sister, mm-hmm. but she was much older than he was mm-hmm. um, at the time. Mm-hmm. And she helped raise my biological mom, which is probably why we landed with her mm-hmm. because she was more like a grandmother to us and to my kids, definitely. You know, more like a grandmother. We called her mama. And so uh, she wasn't really like an aunt. Uh, when she um, when she passed, there was a part of me left. Mm-hmm. Um, a part of me left and felt lost. I My biological mom was in my care up until a few months ago. Um, she uh, has kidney failure. Mm-hmm. So during the journey and time of um, my daughter leaving, mm-hmm. my brother passed away in 2011. Mm-hmm. Um, I care for my father who is is mentally challenged. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, raising my grandson. I just kept having faith. I mean, I just, I would go to bed sometime depressed, but God has a way of talking to you. Mm-hmm. And I would wake up like, Okay, it's it's a new day. I'm going to mm-hmm. still push forward and make my dreams happen. But in the process, I never have lost. Um, being the oldest, I've just always had that kind of leadership attitude. I have a brother and a sister that's younger. And um, we're only less than a year apart. I mean, excuse me, two years apart. Mm-hmm. But by me being the oldest, I just always kind of had like that headstrong I'm not going to give up attitude. So that's how I took that attitude with singing. I just was like, I refuse to give up, Mm -hmm. but I will accept whatever adversity is coming my direction. Yes, I've heard some of your peers even speak about you in Mm -hmm. such fantastic ways that before I even got to know you, I would see you, Mm -hmm. you know, like at places like Imagine Affairs and whatnot, (laughs) downtown Oakland. Mm -hmm. And, um, but then when I met you, and you also sung at the Friday Night Out Showcase, yeah, you I know, and you blew them away. And I was like, oh, my God, it was different hearing you in rehearsal, mm-hmm. like when you was rehearsing for yes. a few big shows mm-hmm. that I seen you like. And you was killing it then, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. But it's like when you get on stage, it's like you possessed. Yeah, like your whole voice <laughs> just just go a whole, n- like, I'm like, I'd be at eye listening to you. Thank so you. do you channel your um, adversities, I would put it into your music. Do you channel that? Like, is do you get power from that? Yeah, and I also yeah. get lost in it too. So sometimes I, I, you know, um, uh, I grew up on country and western. I didn't, I didn't hear, and I hate to say this, but you know, my parents, I didn't hear Aretha Franklin or Gladys Knight. Natalie Cole or Chaka Khan until I was an adult and when I say adult I mean I was like in my late 20s when I mm-hmm. actually paid attention to mm-hmm. who they were I, I was one of those kids unfortunately I didn't get to see Michael Jackson as a child mm-hmm. but um, and not and, and know who he was mm-hmm. now I, I probably heard the songs but I couldn't make identification because in my home we were listening to Elvis and Nat King Cole and um I listened to a lot of uh, country and western. I wanted to be Dolly Parton. Mm-hmm. Um, not so much her, but mm-hmm. I just thought I loved her voice. Mm-hmm. I loved her dress, her style, her, you know, 
I thought she was beautiful. And um, and I love the people that I listen to, Johnny Cash, mm-hmm. um, Tom Jones. I thought I was going to marry him. You know. <laughs> Donnie and Marie, I, I right. love them. You know, but my parents, I mean, they listen to different music. Mm-hmm. And so I grew up uh, listening to just a different type of music. When I became an adult, um, and when I, because I became a young mother at such a young age, I couldn't hang out with my friends. So I got deeper into music, but then more on a diverse end of, you know, my, my culture of music, per se. Well, tell us, you know, being a great singer that you are now, and you steady just, wow, you're killing it. So who have you sung with? Tell us some more people who you sung with recently. You just mm-hmm. did a few big shows and whatnot. You know, if you want to tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. And, and um, tell us about the feeling you felt working with these different people and their styles and whatnot. I think the biggest feeling I've had has been with uh, Jesse James, the blues singer. Mm-hmm. Uh, because Jesse, um, I started, uh, when, I, when I started working with the first band, um, the Dynamic Four. Mm-hmm. So Google them up. And I'm actually the niece of, um, for all the older um, bl- blues lovers, I'm the niece of Baby Jewel and Vernon Gary. Mm-hmm. She passed away a year after I was born. Mm-hmm. Um, but she was actually the only vocalist other than myself in my family. Mm-hmm. Um, so Jesse James and Dynamic Four, they all knew her. It was ironic. We were talking one day, and I just spoke of her, and then our relationship just evolved. But um, the one thing I loved about working with them were they got me on the stages with Lenny Williams, and I got to meet Betty Wright and Denise LaSalle, and um, I got to meet, uh, that's how I was able to meet Pay LaBelle and the OJs. And I remember feeling um, not escalated like I even actually belonged there, I feel like a kid in school because I'm like I'm watching all these giants um, that I relearned about as an adult because as right. a child I didn't get to see them. Right. Probably my biggest highlight was meeting um, uh, Patti LaBelle and just amazed and at awe at how she was able to just captivate the audience and hold them there like a spell and. Um, and I just felt good that Jesse and them put me aboard with them. I thought that was great. One of the other highlights was working with Corey the Poet this year, excuse me, last year, November the 14th. Uh, I think that's the date. I might November be wrong the with the date. November the 8th, there we are. But um, working with him at the Bow Theater was a big highlight for me because uh, that was the first time that I had showcased um, that I actually read music, that I play, that mm. I write. Yeah. And the song I wrote was a song I had written 20 years ago. Wow. It was during that time when I was a mommy and just at home and and um, entertaining my children and stuffed animals, and my, the cats that we had, because that was my <laughs> audience. <laughs> and let's show them a clip of that real quick. Okay, you know? let's do it. All right, let's see if we can do that real quick, which you at the Bow Theater, right? At the Bow. We're going to show some of it because it says it's like eight minutes. Yeah. How y'all doing? Touching her, giving 
that experience at the bath theater. That experience was awesome. Uh, I, I still pinch myself. Yeah. And uh, I was very nervous. Um, I, I want to thank the the friends that I have and supporters, my children, because I had I had to get a lot of encouragement to play for myself. <laughs> because... <laughs> It was fantastic, and I want you. I was out there in that audience too. <laughs> I was out there in that audience, and you was killing it. Thank you. Thank I can't you. show the whole thing right now, right. but um, it is on a CD, correct? Isn't that yes. track on? What's the name of it? Um, I'm not willing. I'm not willing, right? So, tell them how they can get that. Uh, they, uh, right now, it's on um, Corey the Poets. Uh, oh, okay. Love Movement CD. And you got you also on somebody else's CD yes, too, right? Yes, yes, yes. Actually, the um, the late great Grady Wilkins from. Uh, oh, okay. And Ralph Green yeah. is actually it's it's his um, debut CD, but uh, I actually came in in the beginning, mm -hmm. and I was just doing background. Mm -hmm. And um, and then Sugar Ray, that was writing along with Grady, mm -hmm. kept saying, well, we're going to write a song for you. Um, because I grew up on a different type of music, mm -hmm. I've never been um, overexerted about exposing myself. I'm usually more comfortable in the background, mm -hmm. you know, more. And I've always done background support work. You call me, I'm there. But if you tell me to go in the front, sometimes I'm like, mm -hmm. you know, um, not because I don't think I can do it. Mm -hmm. I'm just kind of shy about doing it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't show, I don't think, in my performances, but I'm shy. I when don't it comes to <laughs> think it's, look, as a matter of fact, <laughs> matter of fact, I don't think it's show at all because right here, there's an award you won from the Black Music Award, correct? Yes. Um, But you won six of these, though, am I yeah. correct? Yeah. I, twice, so. two years in a row, I was um, won Bay Area. Um, yeah, um, so Rising for you to win six of those, I don't think that's shy, right? No. Well, I mean, I, I just take it as um, my my work, you know, the progress proves within itself of my work. So what's in the future for you and, and your work and your career in, in music? What's in the future? My future? Right now, um, I'm working on my own uh, personal CD. CD, mm -hmm. um, It's going to be titled um, Beautiful Pain. Oh. Because that's what I write about. Mm -hmm. um, I have a song on there uh, when my daughter was diagnosed with ovarian cancer. Um, it hit me, you know, as a mother. But I was so impressed with her heroically. She was very strong. Um, and you just never know how you're going to react when you have, you know, things happen to you. Especially on a tragic end. She had just had her youngest daughter, who was mm -hmm. very young. And she has a, a six-year-old. So mm -hmm. that, for me as a mother, though, was devastating for me to hear, but this is my child. Mm -hmm. So I wrote, I actually performed it at the last BMA Awards. Uh, well, I won that award. Yeah. <laughs> I performed the original live uh, at the Bow Theater. Um, but we went back in, and I'm fortunate to work with Levi Caesar. Uh, he's used to be the musical director with Prince, and now he's with Tony, 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 and everybody mm -hmm. else. Um, he's phenomenal, and I approached him, and I just asked him would he work with me, and uh, the rest is is just going down in history. Right. The, 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 we came up with the idea of um, beautiful pain uh, because that's pretty much what I write about, not so much that I feel like my pain is tragedy. I just kind of take my pain that's somewhat universal in the world mm -hmm. and I just write about it and then whoever wants or can apply that to themselves if it heals them if it makes them feel better then I, that's my Grammy <laughs> so tell us where do you find your strength though you just you know you just keep going you just keep going you don't let stuff like just like make you quit you just stay determined and where do you find this strength and what can you tell our viewers, like even women out there right now who may be young girls who went through some of the similar things that you went through and mm -hmm. they just don't see, like, you know, no light at the end of that tunnel. What kind of advice could you give them? Um, well, one, um, I, I advise, I, I am very proud of all three of my daughters. None of, all of them graduated. Mm -hmm. None of them were, um, you know, teenage mothers that were still in high school. 
Uh, so that was one of the things that I really pushed. Mm -hmm. The other thing was when my youngest daughter was in um, college and she had her two children, uh, I sacrificed not going back to work also to help her raise her two sons mm -hmm. so she could get a degree. She mm -hmm. has a, a bachelor's degree now in African American studies That's with a wonderful. minor in social science. Mm -hmm. um, and she just did well to go back for her master's. But my main oh. thing is that I told her when she got pregnant twice, I said, well, I'll tell you what, I changed the game in our family to be the first, because I wasn't the first teenager to have a baby mm -hmm. uh, so young. But I was the first to graduate, mm -hmm. you know. So I, when I walked across the stage, my oldest daughter was five months old. She was at my graduation, and mm -hmm. I went to Hills College for a little while. I went to Country Coast Community College for mm -hmm. a little while. And I worked for, um, you know, 18 years uh, in, in early childhood. Mm -hmm. And so I told my youngest daughter, well, this is not a setback. This is just something that's going to give you a reason to push. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to use this to help someone else. So I made sure that she went to school every day. I kept those babies for her. She walked the stage, and both her sons was at her college graduation. That's big. So that's where I get my strength from is, is just mainly to just try to show my three daughters. It, you're going to always have obstacles that's thrown your way. Mm -hmm. The deck of cards that you dealt with, you play them. Mm -hmm. You don't run from them. Mm -hmm. You just play them. You don't like that deck. When that deck is over, you put them back in and you shuffle for another deck. Yeah. You know, and you just hope that you don't get the same thing. But um, that uh, my advice to young women and men is to not give up on their dreams. Um, school isn't for everybody. Mm -hmm. So when I say that, I mean college. Mm -hmm. So I usually tell, like even my grandson, at least get your high school diploma. But I want you to go to college. But college isn't for everyone. But let's find out now at 11 what, what, what you're the best at. Right now, he's loving music right now. And so I'm really impressed with that. But I'm still pushing for him to go to college. So we're looking for a performing arts school for him to go into. Something that my mother tried to put me into. They had a small one, so that's why I said I, my first adventure with music was being Dorothy in the performing arts when I was a young child. Right, yeah. right. And so, and that was probably the best tool for me to get into it on a positive note. So now I'm just looking for a higher scale for him to get into it. And I say, if you're going to do it, do it right. You got to do it right. Let's see. Well, before we leave here tonight, right, we got about less than two minutes, though. What do you want to leave with the audience to impact them with? Um, I know what I would like for you to do. Which one? I would like you to hit a little bit of that verse of Killing Me Softly. Like you just, can you do that acapella? <laughs> I can do it acapella. Can you, can you knock a little bit of that out for me? I sure will. Ow! He's drumming my pain with his fingers. Singing my life with his words. Killing me softly with his song. Killing me softly. With his song, telling my whole life with his words, killing me softly with his song. You okay, Chairman? I'm in heaven. <laughs> That's where I'm at. I'm in I heaven. I love a butterfly. I love it. Look. <laughs> <laughs> she had me look at this video earlier, and I cried. I'm going to tell you. I heard her sing with Roberta Flack killing me. I just cried. And to have you here on this show, Nisi, I am so excited. Thank you. I'm so happy. And I told her that she made me very unchairman like earlier, <laughs> shedding them tears right listening to that song. Thank you. But that's what made me ask you that question mm -hmm. about... Do you channel your adversities through your singing? Because I could hear it in your the way you deliver, yes. and you just oh my goodness, you just take me there. So thank you. <laughs> I want to thank you for being on our show thank today. Thank you, thank you, and thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for tuning in. I hope you really got a dose of Nisi Robinson, known as Nisi Living Single, and you can get her on Facebook too at Nisi Living Single. Mm -hmm. Um, you can also Google her. You can YouTube her and, you know, look at some of her other performances. Oh, also Nisi and the Obamas. I've had a band since 2008. 
8. Well, tell them then. And so Nisi and the Obamas is at the Blue Bay Bar and Grill. Uh, used to be formerly Dorsey's Locker. We've been there five consecutive years. Uh, we just did Jeffrey's for a little while. Uh, we did the Oyster Reef when they were open. Uh, we did Jeff um, Jimmy's when they were open. So I've been fortunate, uh, which is how I was able to meet Jesse James and the Dynamic Four from them coming and seeing me with uh, the Top 40 band at the time. Well, that's fantastic. Yeah, so look for us, Nisi and the Obamas. Look for her. And on that note, I am Frank Williams. This is the Frank Williams Show. Some people call me the chairman, right? Because I am the chairman. And I want to thank you for being here. Thank you again, Nisi. You're welcome. All right. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. Sing it. Choose.